cannabis legalization pushes in South Dakota and North Dakota. We got that happening in both states. So we'll talk about it. 420, we open a big fat bag of cannabis news. This Thursday's no different. I uh, had a little bit of that uh, that uh, Chinese pneumonia, I think. So I uh, had to dip out last uh, Thursday. But uh, it's rare that I uh, that I don't show up. And uh, I think you can trust that it was best that uh, I wasn't in here. And so I wasn't. But I'm in here now, side stage with Trav, one of three, right before me. Stinky Arts Music Mart, but not today, is normally right after me. Locals on the 8, Radio Free Madness, Black Ring Ritual, wraps up your Thursday here, again, at the best radio station that I know of. Uh, this show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy, Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook, blackcottagealchemy.com, or you can scurry on downtown here to Tochi Products. He uh, carries all of... The body butter, the uh, colloidal silvers, the uh, the hand soaps, the dish soaps. Just tell them Wilson sent you. He'll take care of you. And I was in there today and I noticed that there is a cannabis legalization petition thingy. So make sure you get in there and you sign that. I'm assuming there's one at Orange Records as well. I don't know that though for sure. But once I do know, I will uh, promote that and let you know. But all throughout the state of North Dakota... Uh, it's the new approach, North Dakota. It's the push. Now, again, I'm uh, realistic to know that, I mean, the three plants you can grow looks and sounds really, really good, and it's going to get signatures. But, I mean, when you're in this as long as I have it, you know that the legislators very easily will remove that. And and anybody running that campaign that will tell you different is lying because they do it. There, there's so many documented cases where, the people voted on a particular thing, and then when the cloud settled, guess what it wasn't on there? Some of the stuff the people had voted through. And, and I guarantee you, home grow is going to be something those certainly Western schmuckheads west of, uh, say, Fargo that are in charge of that part of the state is going to have trouble with the home grow. I can tell you that right now. And they're going to do what they do. But anyway, sign it anyway. Show your support. Got to talk indeed with Wilson every Thursday. You're listening to me right now. 420, we open a big fat bag of cannabis news, and that is coming up here in a matter of minutes. I just want to say that I believe cannabis was created by the man upstairs, God himself, and I show him support at Antioch Church. That's my church. It's going to be at 417 Main Avenue once we uh, get the paint put on there, whatnot. But until then, Life Point Sanctuary, one more Sunday, 10 a.m., Come uh, come check me out. But anyway, kind of talking D with Wilson. That's what you're listening to right now. We uh, are having a benefit event happening May 7th downtown at the Aqua, the Fish Bowl, a.k.a. AKA the Aquarium in Fargo. Featuring from Minneapolis, we have Sean Anonymous and Chance York, along with producer and DJ Dimitri Killstorm. Local Ray Ray from the O is a 21-plus event. Music starts at 10. All proceeds go to support KRWF 95.9 Radio Free Fargo. That's us. To learn more about the benefit, go to RadioFreeFargo.org or search Facebook events for more information. And thank you for supporting community radio and again we're archiving this stuff so just go to the website radiofreefargo.org click the listen live button on the screen and you can listen to the two most recent editions of your favorite show on the station just go to the site on your left choose shows review our weekly schedule of specialty shows page back choose calendar page will come up up and up 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 below the player will be our schedule of shows all right well there you have it Kind of talking D with Wilson. We talk about cannabis, cannabis legalization. I've got some kind of t- issues with the stupid music. Uh, some people would say I should just learn how to do vinyl, but I don't know how to do vinyl. But uh, again, shout out Black Cottage Alchemy. Uh, kind of talk ND on Instagram. If something changes, I will shoot you the info there. And uh, again, North Dakota does have new approach, North Dakota. If you see a petitioner, I've seen several. I've done my part. I've signed already. So again, get out and sign. And if you want to make a little money, money, go to new approach, North Dakota, and that kick you down uh, an hourly wage to get out there and get signatures. And I can assure you it's going to be a walk in the park. Everybody's going to want to sign. Now, I'm going to try to play this first song up. It's the Black Keys. Let me see if I can do it on 95.9. Oh, man, that's not the song I was going to play. But again, I've got some sort of uh, setback 
Oh, see, now this is the one I wanted to play, and I don't know how to stop it. Oh, no. Okay. There, I think I did it. But uh, anyway, kind of talking D with Wilson. Uh, we're going to have some issues here today. But uh, again, I love cannabis. Cannabis was grown by our creator, God himself. And I'm going to talk about that. And that's what I'm going to do. And if the music comes through a little funny, well, then it comes through a little funny. And I'm going to find out why my Apple thing is giving me issues. And we're going to keep right on pushing. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep right on pushing because I'm not going to stop. Nobody's going to stop. I won't stop. Music on 95.9 FM, KRFF, LP, Radio Free Fargo is being underwritten by Orange Records. Orange Records offers a variety of new and music and used music on vinyl and CD, as well as a large selection of posters, DVDs, and much more. Orange Records buys to used vinyl, CDs, and cassettes. Orange Records is located at 641 First Avenue North in downtown Fargo. They are open noon to 630, Monday through Saturday, and are closed on Sundays. Search Orange Records Fargo on Facebook for updates on new arrivals and special events. Shout out Orange Records. And again, I believe they've got the cannabis legalization petition. And again, we can talk about that a little bit. Um, again, uh, if you want a petition, New Approach North Dakota, just Google search it and it'll get you to the uh, to the web page. And uh, again, they have until July, which is wild. But uh, again, there's money kicked down for petitioners which will expedite uh, pretty uh, pretty quickly. Twenty one plus, twenty one plus. I think you, it's uh, one ounce you can have. And again, the three plants you can grow is really awesome. Um, I've got a really big walk-in closet, and I would love, love to make it stinky in there. I really would. I mean, it's got I got like twelve foot ceilings. I mean, it's already completely dark, so I can regulate the light pretty easy, you know. So, but again, I know about. The tomfoolery that happens up there in that old capital when them people get together. They start talking about stuff that ain't about what we talking about. And they're trying to talk about other stuff. And then I guarantee you they'll be like, them plants of the devil, they can't be growing them in the house. They can't be growing them in the house. Here, here, here. And then there's just, and then there you go. And then they start banging their hammers. And next thing you know, you voted for three plants. But the legislators decided that that's not how it was going to get down. You know what I'm saying? And again, I I would love for you to tell me, well, it's not going to happen this time. You know, they're not going to do it this time. This time things are going to be better. But again, it's like Charlie Brown and the uh, stinking football. She goes, I ain't going to pull it away from you, baby. I ain't going to pull it away from you, baby. Charlie Brown goes, man, she ain't going to lie to me this time, baby. Runs down there. She moves the football. He kicks it. He falls on his hind end, which is what they do to us all the time so again i i want to be stoked about it i really do and i'm not not stoked you know what i'm saying but uh we'll see how this thing again shakes out uh but again put put your support in and if you can uh hang out and get a little signatures uh they are going to pay you and i know uh orange records and tochi products you can sign so uh, make sure you do that. And again, thanks for listening to Canada Talking D with Wilson. Every Thursday I get in here. Last Thursday I was down with it. I was down with it, dog. Man, I mean, sick wasn't even really the word. I uh, I was just uh, locked into something nasty. As something nasty, Cora. Nah, it was all right. But uh, again, uh, the two Thursdays ago that head cold. I I I don't know. I uh. I don't know that I should have been out, but I was, and it's over, and uh, I learned something. So, uh, again, kind of talking to you with Wilson is uh, screaming around the corner here. Let's see. So, South Dakota, they got the signatures. We'll talk about more of that at uh, at 420. I want to talk to you about this talk music venue, what's coming up with these guys. Friday, May 6th, that's tonight, Club Spirit, Reshnacky on the Proven Grounds Tour. Come check out Talk Music Venue. Girl Named Tom, live in Fargo, that's the next day, May 7th. May 13th, we got Slimes, Excalibur Tour, Talk Music Venue. Then Wednesday, June 29th, you got Semi-Charmed Hero, live, hosted by DJ Cab. Okay, so, Talk, a paid sponsor, local artists, so we love Talk Music ven- Venues, 
And if you want to check it out, you go check it out too, okay, buddy? But anyway, I'm going to try to play some more music here, and then we're going to talk about cannabis in a positive light. I'm not 100% sure, again, that this is going to work out right, but it's a small wrinkle. It's the Sly Brothers. Praise you. No, it ain't. Let me see here. Oh, man. My uh, transitions aren't as smooth as they usually are, but I'm doing what I can because my music stuff's messing up. Robert Randolph presents Sly Brothers Praise You. That is great, isn't it? So anyway, thank you for checking out Can of Talk and D with Wilson at 420. We're going to open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And I just realized I can't play my intro music <laughs> because I don't have my intro music. So this is going to be a little tricky. We're just going to have to pretend, huh? We're just going to have to pretend. And we can do that because I don't know. I could try to pause something. I don't have time to figure it all out. But anyway, it's no big deal. We're going to talk about cannabis on the other side of this. Normally, I would play some intro music. I ain't got any, so we're not going to today. But again, this is Kind of Talking D with Wilson. Every 420, or every Thursday I get in here, 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And we're going to open a big fat cannabis news. Maybe I'll whistle a little bit. And then when I come on the other side of this, we're going to talk about cannabis in a positive light. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome. It's a beautiful day here in Fargo. Oh, it is gorgeous. I'm not wearing a coat. I mean, I'm wearing pants. So, you know, thankfully you guys are, you know, well, you you wouldn't know. It wouldn't matter to you guys at all, right? But anyway, kind of talking to you with Wilson. Welcome. We're going to talk about cannabis in a positive light. So we're going to talk about South Dakota because that's just what popped up on my screen. I'm excited to get into it. But again, welcome to the show. I'm happy that you're here. And I'll be here next Thursday. Right after me is no Stinky Arts Music Mart, but there's local on the 8. There's Radio Free Madness and Black Ring Ritual. So stick around. South Dakota activists turn in signatures to put cannabis legalization on the ballot. That's exciting. I clap my hands, but I don't feel like it. South Dakota activists turned in what they say are more than enough. They've got about verified about 19,250 signatures. They need 16,961. So that's Matthew Schweck, campaign director of SDBML, told Cannabis Moment that the furious final push to collect the remaining signatures this past month delivered results, and they are confident that the state will clear the measure for the ballot following its review. And man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I mean, what, not last Thursday, but the Thursday before, they were talking about Snoop D.O. Double's concert getting hundreds of signatures, and they were still thousands down. So these guys grind. Because if they were a thousand down at 1696, and they're up to 19, then they really they really put it. So this campaign was a statewide grassroots effort that involved thousands of South Dakotans. However, uh, I believe uh, that uh, Marijuana Policy Project is also involved with these guys. Uh, South Dakota voters already approved legalization. These guys have been just up the hill with this stuff. Uh, the measure would allow adults 21 and older to purchase and possess up to an ounce. They could also grow up to three plants for personal use. And that's exactly what's going on with North, uh, North Dakota, new approach, North Dakota. It's, it's exactly, almost exactly the same. Um, so shout out to those guys. South Dakota's for better cannabis laws on Tuesday. Uh, we're excited to announce that they were on their way to Pierre to deliver the petitions to South Dakota secretary of state. Uh, to that end, the campaign will now be focusing efforts on defeating a separate constitutional initiative, Amendment C. So if you're uh, out of South Dakota, pay attention to that because it would require at least 60% of voters to approve a ballot measure instead of a simple majority. So this is about controlling the people. So uh, Schweck called the proposal a disgraceful sneak attack on the constitutional ballot initiative rights of the people of South Dakota, and I would agree. Definitely el sneako muchacho and uh, whatever that means. But anyway, so shout out South Dakota. They got enough because it seemed to me like two weeks ago I was saying stuff like uh, there's a what? A yellow alert. There was a yellow alert. They were getting a little nervous. They were getting a little nervous. They're like, I don't know if we can do it. I don't know if we can do it. Oh, man. But man, I'm feeling better, man. I love it. Man, I love this weather. High Times Magazine article. This is going to be a fun one. It's by A.J. Harrington, spelled with an H. Washington lawmakers delete 
the word marijuana from state statutes. Let's let, let me just read that again for all the boys in the band. Because now I personally have made a lot of people, and let's just do it right now. Put your left hand on the Bible, your right hand up in the air, and solemnly swear that you will never call cannabis anything but cannabis. You will not call it dope. You won't call it weed. You won't call it marijuana. So help you God. From this point on, you can be like Washington lawmakers. The word marijuana will be stricken from all legislation in the state of Washington under a bill recently passed by state lawmakers. That's good news, y'all. The measure House Bill 1210 will place the term marijuana with the word cannabis, which is awesome because that's, in fact, what it is. I mean, if you want to call it sativa or indica, sure. You know, but if you call it indica and it's sativa, you know, you might as well just call it cannabis and then you're good. And in review, sativa is like daytime, get stuff done. And it doesn't really say that in the word. But if you put it up against indica, which they say means in the couch, which means if you've got, you know, issues that uh, require you to sit there, maybe get hungry, maybe get tired, you know, maybe cough a little bit, get that cataract, dry eye stuff rocking. Otherwise, sativa is daytime, indica is nighttime. And it's all cannabis. There's none, none of it's marijuana. Marijuana was, again, that was the term they used to make, to imply that if you had it, you were Mexican or another ethnicity. But it certainly started out as the Mexican border. What with your funny cigarettes and, you know, taking all our white women. And that's just, the, I mean, Google it. It's documented, you know. So Democratic State Rep Melanie Morgan, the sponsor of the legislation, told her colleagues in the House last year that the word marijuana has racial undertones that go back nearly a century. Man, this Melanie's pretty smart. The term marijuana itself is pejorative and racist, Morgan said. As rec cannabis use became more popular, it was negatively associated with Mexican immigrants. It seemed like I just said that. Even though it seems simple because it's just one word, the reality is we're healing the wrongs that were committed against black and brown people around cannabis. Racist language and legislation. Morgan said that the words racist connotation was initiated by Harry Anslinger. What a freak that guy was. The first commissioner of the FB of narcotics, which later became the DEA. Anslinger was an instrumental force in the passage of the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937, which began the U.S. prohibition of cannabis. And he had a lot of skin in the game. He had paper. He didn't want to use, he didn't want people using him. It was Anslinger that said, and I quote, Marijuana is the most violent causing drug in the history of mankind. This is what the guy who got it made illegal thought. And most marijuana users are Negroes, Hispanics, Caribbean, and entertainers. Their satanic music, jazz, and swing results from marijuana usage, Morgan said during a legislative hearing. And that was the guy that made it illegal. He sounds like a horrible guy. Why are we listening to him? So State Representative Emily Wick said the bill can help change how conversations about cannabis are framed. Although we call it a technical fix, I think it does a lot to undo or at least correct in some effort some of the serious harms around this language. And it just really isn't. I almost feel like people who don't want it legal love calling it that. You know, and it is cannabis. A lot of people pretend that. I mean, they don't even know what you mean when you say cannabis. You say devil's lettuce. Well, they probably will know. But Joy Hollingsworth, who owns a Hollingsworth Cannabis Company with her family, told news people the word marijuana is an unwelcome term for many people in communities of color. It had been talked about for a long time in our community and about how that word demonizes the cannabis plant. She was the one who educated us on the term and how it was derogatory and we shouldn't use it anymore. We have a lot of people, especially in the black community, that went to prison over cannabis for years that were locked up, bop, 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 bop. So the House Bill 1210 is a step in the right direction. She would also like to see more action on social equity. Cannabis Industry and Advocates Support Bill was supported by state and national cannabis reform advocacy groups and industry representatives. So, well, it's definitely time to steer permanently away from terms based in racism. Replacing marijuana with cannabis is merely a drop in the ocean when it comes to correcting the wrong done by the war on drugs. But again, it is not marijuana. It's cannabis. So let's just call it cannabis, shall we? And it just has less connotation. Again, advocates for legalizing cannabis, South Dakota, submit thousands of petition signatures. Uh, this is just another article from Pierre, South Dakota, K-E-V-E, K-E-V-N. Um, like I said, they've got, uh, they turned in roughly 25,000 signatures. Uh, they've been working since last October for, to get the, uh, put together the signatures, uh, but kicked the campaign into overdrive, which reminds me 
Um, well, their organization quickly got involved every way we could. Um, they provided office spaces, parking lots for petition drive throughs uh, People personally went out and collected signatures. It's insane. So Amendment C again, South Dakota. Make sure you vote that at a big fat no. Here we got uh, Maryland judge bans any talk of legalization in cannabis trafficking trial. This is going to be interesting. One cannabis trafficking case between Cali and Maryland is putting a spotlight on the blatant hypocrisy of the justice system when it comes to cannabis related charges. <laughs> According to the prosecutors, Jonathan Wall, now 27, well, now 27, oh, oh, he was in jail. I was going to say, well, what do you mean now 27? You mean like then he was 26 and later he was 28? What's going on? Ten others transported over 1,000 kilograms of cannabis from Cali to Maryland over a period of two years. Given those amounts, Maryland law defines him as a drug kingpin. I mean, I don't even, when you say kilograms, what does that even mean? Is that pounds? I mean, what is it? Because it sounds like a tiny little bit in a baggie. A federal grand jury indicted him in 2019 in the case of the United States versus Wall. If convicted of conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute, Wall faces a sentence of up to 10 years to life in Fed Pen with a mandatory 10-year sentence hovering over his head. Mandatory. Today marks Wall's first appearance in court as he's confined to Fed Supermax prison. Man, the elephant in the room, however, is, is the fact that cannabis is legal for adult purposes in 18 states and several jurisdictions and legal for medical reasons and dozens more. However, Wall is confined to a federal Supermax prison. And I remember when I was in jail, and they were a horrible jail in South Dakota for, for my medicine, for my vape pen, drier by my dad, the safest way, if you ask me. Um, I was treated hard. I mean, when you think about it, it, I don't, I wasn't the crime. The punishment didn't fit the crime. The food was horrible. I eat clean. You're going to make me eat out of number 10 cans. Ick, icky. You're going to give me cookies that I don't even, I can't, you're not going to even convince me they're cookies. I mean, the food there, I mean, you ought to see what I eat. I don't have a free, I don't buy freezer stuff. Everything I eat's clean. And fresh that same day. There's no leftovers in my place. There's no TV dinners. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I mean, it, it, I I didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. And I didn't cry because, you know, I noticed one guy was kind of looking at me like he's kind of cute. No, just kidding. But anyway, I'm just saying cannabis shouldn't come with horrible food to eat. It shouldn't be. You deserve it. You're using cannabis instead of, you know, psychotropics for your, you know, your mental condition. So I don't know. I'm, I'm getting kind of sidetracked. On April 26th, the U.S. District Judge Stephanie approved a motion by prosecutors calling for the court to bar any discussion of the cannabis legalization movement currently taking place across the United States, which is kind of funny because it, it, the defense in other words, the defense cannot point out how hypocritical cannabis-related nonviolent cases are in 2022 given the changes in law. That is, they are not allowed to show how hypocritical this is. Why? I mean, he's facing up to 10 years in life in federal prison. He's in a supermax right now. You called it 1,000 kilograms. Nobody even knows what that means. So anyway, prosecutors from the Justice Department filed the motion weeks ago requesting that the district court preclude his defense team from asking questions, presenting evidence, or making arguments regarding the way the law in other jurisdictions treats cannabis. Because if he was somewhere else, he, you know what I mean? Ge and I've always thought this was a problem. Geographically, and then we talk about, you know, states and morality and ethics, you know, and is it the right thing? And I say it's very unethical. And just downright inhumane. If Denver Fred gets pulled over and the cop goes, oh, I also use that strain, but you got to put it in the trunk. Have a nice day now, Denver Dan. Meanwhile, Fargo Fred gets pulled over with a thousand kilograms and he's in a supermax prison because geographically he was in a hot spot for victimization of cannabis how can it be just where you're standing determines what ends up to you what ends up happening to you you either get a pat on the back and a high five 
a way to take care of your health. Screw the pharmaceutical company. Use a natural solution. Add a boy, says Officer Friendly. Fargo's like, get out of the car, put your hands on the hood, you're going to Supermax. What? I just That's just never made any sense to me. Because I just remember, you know, cops just looking at me whenever I'd say, well, but you guys suck. You know? Now I'm going to have to use a pop can because you just... You know, whatever that word is, is uh, you confiscated my Piper Rooney. So you just, you're not doing me any solids. You're, you're, you're hurting me. And it's like, well, I didn't make it illegal, you know. So I don't know, man. I think cannabis just needs to be legalized, legalized based on that quote by Harry Anslinger. People who want it to still be illegal should tell me that you're okay with taking precedent from a racist capitalist criminal prick or at least say that you're also that kind of person so the topic of legalization is irrelevant to the trial the judge claims the motion added that evidence and argument of this sort is not relevant and should be excluded um cannabis is a schedule one controlled substance and under federal law it is a crime to conspire with others see that's (laughs) that's just what the prosecutors write in the motion the fact that other jurisdictions have legalized it or considering decrim is not relevant to the issues at this trial. And see, that's what I'm saying. But we're still dealing with humans. Jonathan is still a human. And if he was in Denver, he wouldn't have this issue. He would be, I mean, is it respectful to apply in a law that is just, I mean, it's like a... It's it's like a courtesy. It's like you just want him. You want to press federal charges. Wouldn't you want to go? I just don't understand why they don't take the other stance. And you go, you know what? We need to know all this other information. Because, because since we know this other information, we can treat and deal with Jonathan Wall uniquely, individually. And just blanket, individual blanket toss to all this. You know, just throw it all in a basket. And that's what they love doing. They love just putting it all in one parameter. Easy to understand. Except, so they want to exclude all the stuff that would make it a little harder to be a little more humane when it comes to Jonathan Wall. And that's crazy. So everybody knows it's federally illegal, but certainly not to that extent until they find themselves affected firsthand. Wall was housed at the Chesapeake Detention Facility in Baltimore, known for its high level of violence. I guarantee you, Chesapeake Detention Center in Baltimore. I mean, everybody I've ever met from Baltimore, a little nah, a little gnarly, a little gnarly. Is it really fair that one person has to weather extreme prison conditions for something that is now legal? That's what I'm saying. I just had an herbal pen for my medicine. I got to eat out of a number 10 can. Those grapes that don't expire for 47 years, you're going to tell me what they're soaking in is healthy? No, sir. I refuse. Wall's lawyer, Jason Flores, a noted activist, agreed that the war on drugs is a dead idea and people are still paying consequences. He says there are so many people who are dedicated and essentially donated their life to getting this plant to where it is today on the verge of legalization. And Wall's like, do I have to be the last person who's prosecuted for a product that's making billions of dollars around the world? I, Man, oh man. So anyway, shout out to this wall. Uh, Wall's trial begins Monday morning in the U.S. District Courthouse in downtown Baltimore. As of the time of writing his petition on change, gained over 16,000 signatures. He tried to get it to uh, them to throw it out. But uh, own count, uh, let's see, details how rape charges can yield less time in prison than the drug charges he's facing it is insane. So anyway, here we got from High Times Magazine 2. Fewer than 450 patients certified in South Dakota. Give me one second. 450 patients certified in South Dakota medical cannabis program. I just want to mention that you listen to Canada Talk and D with Wilson. I'm Wilson. Every Thursday I get in here, 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news, and that's what I'm doing here. We've had a few hiccups, but uh, otherwise the content regarding cannabis legalization and cannabis... uh, Medical benefits, uh, I'm, I'm doing pretty stinking well, I'd say. So thank you for joining me and keep on listening. We got about, uh, you know, 15, 10, 9, 7, 8 minutes left. I got to shoot out of here a little early because we do church on Thursdays while we wait for our building to be done, which should be done next week. So I got to shoot out of here a little early because I got to get some work done before I get my uh, get my cannabis-loving uh, hind end to church. But anyway, 
Fewer than 450 patients certified in South Dakota Medical Cannabis Program. The fledgling, and boy, do they love saying that, right? The fledgling medical cannabis program. However, Yankton, you go to the uh, the Yankton tribe, they take care of you right now. They take care of you right now. Of course, there's a cop sitting outside on the highway looking to get you. Well, it's a mess. But anyway, the fledgling cannabis program continues to build at a slow pace with a local news report this week saying that only a little more than 400 patients have been certified. That comes via the Argus leader, uh, Sioux Falls, reported the department had issued just 419 medical cards to patients. It's hilarious. You can't get one more, so there'd be 420. Come on, people. According to the newspaper that has prompted MyMarijuanaCards.com, a nationally recognized telehealth company to host the state's first ever three-day mass patient screening event Tuesday in downtown Sioux Falls. The event runs through Thursday. Despite being available since November, only a few South Dakota residents have been able to obtain a state-issued card due to the limited number of doctors. It's not people. It's doctors. Authorized to certified patients. Again, it isn't just patients who have been slow to enroll. Last month, local television station Kalo reported that only 90 South Dakota doctors have been approved to validate the use of cannabis to their patients, which accounts for just 4.7% of the state's 2,200 doctors. It's ridiculous, people. So that's just what I'm saying. I mean, and it's not because it's bad. It, it's not because these doctors know more. It's just they get paid to push something other than cannabis, and it's the truth. We aren't lying. We're not just hopheads. We're serious. Cannabis is a is a cure for a lot of things. If anything, it makes you not focus on your toothache, I heard. Well, come on. That's not medicinal. Toothache pain to make you want to jump out of a window onto a rusty rake handle. So if cannabis takes your mind off it, that isn't medicinal? Come on. The Argus leader reported that Branson said South Dakota's medical cannabis law requires South Dakotans to receive certification from a medical professional before they can be considered for a card. Law also requires screenings be in person, not over the telephone. No video conference. You can't zoom your way to a cannabis card, buddy. Well, anyway, the newspaper also noticed a reluctance among the healthcare systems to provide direction to their physicians about certifying patients. They suck. We went to the same thing in North Dakota. It's been a turbulent year and a half for cannabis reform in Mount Rushmore State. Uh, The voters there approved a pair of ballot measures in 2020. They've just had so much trouble, and they've been fighting so hard. The Flandreau Santee Sioux Tribe, which operates the dispensary, maintains that its medical cannabis cards should be treated as legally valid, but Gnome's admin has said that it would only recognize cards issued to the members of the tribe. So the tribe said at time has issued thousands of cards to tribal and non-tribal members. In February, tribal officials said that more than 100 individuals who are issued medical cards have been arrested. Man, oh man, oh man. So, again, South Dakota struggling to do right by the people. Normal, President Biden used clemency powers for the first time. Normal calls his actions woefully inadequate. It's hilarious. Joe Biden utilized his powers for the first time today. I don't know if he just woke up and there was a sheet of paper that said, hey, this is what you're doing. This morning, the White House announced a pardoning or commutation of sentencing for 78 individuals, most of whom had been on supervised release during COVID. Uh, 78 individuals, nine had federal charges. Uh, the executive director responded, branding thousands of our citizens as lifelong criminals, deet to deet deet, but it's inadequate when there remains over 10,000 individuals who still suffer. Uh, he added, as well past the time for President Biden to make good on his campaign promise. Uh, so again, I mean, it's all talk a lot of times. That's why I don't, I'm scared that North Dakota is going to figure out how to ramrod us in the back door with that three plants allowance to grow. But we'll see. New Jersey sold nearly $2 million worth of cannabis on first day of adult use sales. It's awesome. The Garden State didn't authorize adult use sales to begin until the day after 420. But that didn't stop people from buying massive quantities of the buddy, but, 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 but. New Jersey's new adult use market sold nearly $2 million worth of legal cannabis to over 12,000 customers on the very first day of sales. After years of internal delays, Garden State officials finally authorized 13 medical cannabis dispensaries. So let's get cruising through here. GOP congressman requests hearing on FDA's failure to set CBD and Delta 8 THC regulations. That'll be interesting. And if you're into the Delta 8, um, they are going to hold them accountable for its lack of action to set regulations. Uh, he said that the current lack of regulations has led to mislabeling contaminated products. Um, 
So they're basically wanting to get that shut down. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, high times, if you remember, Brittany Griner, she was playing basketball in Russia. She had some bait pens. Man, well, the United States government now considers women's basketball star to be wrongfully detained by Russia. That's, I mean, would that be something you would like happen to you? Yeah, yeah, Wilson is wrongfully detained by Russia. What? I mean, that sounds horrible. Citing sources familiar with her case, it represents a significant shift in how officials will try to get her home. As a result of the shift, the U.S. and supporters will likely be more proactive and public in their efforts. The change means that the U.S. government will no longer wait for Griner's case to play out uh, the Russian legal system and will seek to negotiate her return. The Department of State has determined that the Russian Federation has wrongfully detained Citizen Griner. With this determination, Special Presidential Lynn Boy will lead the interagency team for securing Brittany Griner's release. Six foot nine, she is. Man, be pamby, that's tall. She was arrested at the Moscow airport February 17th if she was allegedly carrying cannabis vape cartridges. Uh, the charge carries a potential sentence of up to 10 years in prison. So uh, they ain't giving her no love. She's been detained for 75 days and our expectations is the White House do whatever is necessary to bring her home. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up here a little early because, again, I got to get and do some work here quick before I do the next thing that I got to do. But uh, next Thursday, but at least two Thursdays from now, I won't have the time crunch. Times crunch? Well, whatever. I'll be more relaxed, and I won't have to shoot out of here a little early. This programming on KRWF 95.9 is being underwritten by Discontent Fargo. Discontent Fargo is your high-class counterculture lifestyle store. Discontent is your destination for the smoke and vape culture, providing a dense selection of artist-based handcraft Glass works, paper products, and lifestyle apparel. Discontent Fargo is located at 512 Broadway in downtown Fargo. Open 10 to 9, Monday through Saturday, and noon to 7 p.m. on Sundays. For more information, check out Discontent Fargo on Facebook and their Instagram at Discontent Stores. Can of Talk Indeed with Wilson. Boom. Every Thursday, 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news, and that went delightfully. Right after me is usually Stinky Arts, Music Mart, but not this Thursday. Locals on the 8, Radio Free Nad- Madness, and Black Ring Ritual. Wraps up your Thursday. And then we got country on deck Friday morning. Side stage with Trav 1 to 3. And now I'm going to try to stink and play music here again. And I'm not sure. If not, I'll just stop it and play out my David Allen and just get out of here. But I'm going to try to play this as Ghost Riders in the Sky, I hope, by Robbie Krieger. You're welcome. Brand new. Ghost Riders in the Sky. That's what that is. Robert Creator, a little Grateful Dead for you. Because that's that's what I like. I like to do stuff for you guys. Radio Free Fargo, 95.9, KRFF. F. Welcome to Can I Talk and D with Wilson. Every Thursday, I get in here at 4 o'clock, 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news. Normally, I take you all the way to 5. But I've got to go get some stuff I normally wouldn't have to do on today. Because normally, I have church on Wednesday. But until we get into our building... I do it on Thursday, so now I'm cramming everything, cramming everything in. You know what I'm saying? So again, Black Cottage Alchemy is sponsoring this show, and I love that she does that. Uh, Black Cottage uh, Body Butters made with kosher full spectrum CBD, North Dakota grown hemp seed oil, 1600 megs of CBD, mango butter, shea butter, and a bunch of other stuff. Go to Tochi Products, and Joe will take care of you there. BlackCottageAlchemy.com. Also, uh, there's a new approach, North Dakota, the new legalization of cannabis ballot initiative is being circulated, and there's one in Tochi, so get in there and sign it, would you? And Orange Records, I think, as well. Again, I uh, have loved being here with you guys. I'm going to jump out of here because i got to go do work. So educate yourself so you can educate others on the benefits of cannabis. And until next time, hug yourself. Enjoy these days because we had a winter. Until then, it's David Allen, Judgment Day. Peace.